Okay, what you're seeing is my breakout board in Arduino Nano. An 8-digit, 7-segment display driven by a Max 7219. And there's assorted sensors and so forth on this breakout prototyping board down here. We have a TMP36 analog temperature sensor here. Then we have a DS18B20 digital temperature sensor. Both have been used with Arduino and both are connected right now to an Arduino Nano on my breakout board. The question which one compared head to head is more accurate? We will look at that in this video. First of all, let's take a brief look at the spec sheets to the two individual thermal sensors that I'll be discussing. The first is the TMP36. It has a three pin package. It has a ground, a VCC, and an analog output. The analog output is proportional to the temperature. Reading through here, the TMP36 is functionally compatible with the LM50. Okay. What you have, the TMP36 is specified from minus 40 degrees Celsius to plus 100 and 25 degrees Celsius and it provides 750 millivolts output at 25 degrees Celsius. What that means is this and you'll find it further down in the spec sheet. You have to subtract a half a volt or so from um, the output. If you take the 750 millivolts, subtract 5 um, and subtract 500 millivolts you end up with 250 millivolts which when you divide by the 25 degrees Celsius it's 25 millivolts per degrees Celsius. Again it's a three pin package. Very easy to hook up, no pull up resistors, it hooks to any of your analog inputs on Arduino. The DS18B20 is a, is a similar looking three pin device. It has an output pin called DQ, a ground, and VDD. But that is where the resemblance to the two devices ends. It has a similar temperature range minus 55 degrees Celsius to 125 degrees Celsius and it requires one output pin but this thing is completely digital. There's no analog here. Um, the question is that I asked before is this any more accurate than the analog unit that I was using? And We will get to that when I explain how the software works. Very simply with this um, you can use this in a two-wire mode. I've never done that. And because each of these devices has an individual, I think, 64-bit serial number, you can hook more than one device on the same input pin. That being said, um, the software for it is quite complex. Again, both are three-pin devices. They use similar voltages. Let's look a little closer at the software part of it. All right, here's a, we'll just do a quick overview of an Arduino sketch. The first negative for me is it requires an external library, which means it's going to be a fit trying to port this thing over to Raspberry Pi or any other system because this library is particular to Arduino. But that's where the fun just gets with all the, comp this thing is very complex to use and for a single sensor, I really question that. I have to initiate one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bytes. That's right, I had to initialize seven bytes. 
and uh, well, that's seven integers, a um, byte, and another array byte. Okay, and you have to go through these DS reset, DS skip. You'll write a uh, code to the d uh, device to begin conversion. According to this schematic, it takes uh, about a, a second for it to do the conversion, maybe 750 milliseconds. Now, after it's done the conversion, you'll have to reset it, and you're going to do a skip because you only got one device connected. Then you're going to write the code uh, 0xbe to read the scratch pad. and you're just going to do a couple of reads uh, with data i it's going to be essentially two bytes all right we're going to label low byte is data zero high byte is data one remember this was an array of two you read the uh, low byte first and then you read the high byte then you're going to have to move stuff around you're going to have to for the temperature reading, you're going to have to left shift high byte by eight, eight, top by eight. Then you're going to add low byte. Now you're going to go ahead and test with a um, bitwise and zero x eight thousand. This is to check to see if the most significant bit is set. If it is set sign bit will return a 0x8000 and of course you're going to have to two comp you're going to have to do a two complement plus one to change it to a negative form then you're going to have to go through this um, formula t100 equals six times t reading plus t reading divided by four um, it's basically a hundred times 0 0.0625 or 6.25 is another way to do it. Then you're going to divide TC100 by 100. Then you're going to do the fractional by doing a um, modulus with 100. And after all of that, just to get it up on the screen, you can do this serial print routine and so forth. So that is a lot, really a lot of steps to me for very little benefit. All right, let's look at my Arduino sketch. I have defined um, digital input one on my Arduino Nano as sensor pin. This is where it really gets tricky for accuracy. Theoretically, 5 volts, your voltage per step on the analog to digital converter is theoretically 5 divided by 1024. It's a 10-bit um, conversion, and it's 4.883 millivolts per step. Fine and dandy. It's not accurate. All right. What I did was take the actual raw integer number that was returned um, from the analog read and then I measured the voltage actually output from the uh, TMP 36 sensor what I came up with when I divided when I divided the uh, voltage by the steps is it came out to 4.44 millivolts per step now remember, as I mentioned earlier, the TMP36 has 750 millivolts output at 25 degrees Celsius. You have to subtract the offset of 0.5 or 500 millivolts. So degrees C equals 750 millivolts minus 500 millivolts divided by 25. That's 10 millivolts per step, and it's fairly accurate. Here is my entire conversion routine. Let's note something. Because this is 10 millivolts per degree Celsius, and I've got something like 0 0.0044 volts per step, 
it's really sort of it's really going to flicker just a tad. I mean, you're so close on a single bit, plus or minus one digital count. What I did with it is I took 10 samples over one second, okay? It's simply a for loop with a delay of 100 milliseconds per loop, and I did an analog read 10 times, added them together, then I divided the result by 10. Gives me a much more accurate, and by the way, result is a float, okay? Because now we are dealing with fractional numbers here. All right, the formula, of course, is here again. I've stated all of that. If I want the centigrade temperature, all I've got to do now is use this formula, temp, that's 0, 0, 0044 times result minus 0.5 divided by 0 0.01. And there we go. There. And if you just use your serial output, you can take that, boom, there's your temperature. That's all it was required. None, no, no 8 or 10 or 12 bytes of whatever that you have to define. Now, because I was using it on the uh, max, um, the 8-digit LED display, I had to do a couple of things to put a decimal point into it. That's particular to that. So to preserve my decimal point two places, I multiplied temp by 100, made sure it was changed over to an integer, and I sent it to my routine BCD out, which displayed it on the um, eight-digit seven-segment display. Let me find that. That is the number you see up there. That is the number taken directly from the uh, TMP36. So the final question is that I asked, which one is more accurate? Let me shock you. The two output readings were within a half degree Celsius of each other. They were that close. The critical step that they often don't tell you in the spec sheets and this other stuff is this measured voltage here. This is critical. This is where I actually, again, took the actual raw integer reading, measured the voltage, and divided the measured voltage uh, by the integer reading and that produced my actual step voltage. That's all there was to it. You can go with all that cr other crazy stuff, or you can go with this one line right here. That's it. One line versus, oh, God knows how much of that other stuff, versus all of this. So that gives you an idea, and these are similar formulas that will work for the, uh, the LM, I think, 35s and so forth. This is all there is to it. It's a very simple formula, particularly with the TMP36. If it's 0 volts and you subtract at 0 volts, it's going to put out right at 500 millivolts minus 500 millivolts. That's going to be 0. And of course, you're going to have to, and of course, if it's going to turn out negative, it's going to show up here right off the bat. It'll come out negative. So that's, so that's how I got the analog temperature sensor to work just as well as the digital sensor with a lot less complexity. So I hope this was worth something to you. Visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com dot com.